Hey everybody, it's Harry from Step at Daddy Barbecue, the YouTube channel that teaches you how to master barbecue so you can spread barbecue love. For those of you who've seen my 40 plus how to cook brisket videos, you're wondering why am I making another brisket video? I have never cooked a Canadian brisket in all my 40 videos, nor in my dozen plus years as a professional pitmaster. I was able to find a Canadian brisket uh, at Restaurant Depot. I suppose it's due to the uh, COVID pandemic. Uh, there's a shortage of beef in America. So they have started to bring in some of the beef from Canada. So I scored myself a Canadian brisket. I'm so eager to try it out to see how the Canadian brisket compares to a USA brisket to see which one's better. And we're gonna to cook this Excel one, which is a choice grade Canadian brisket. And I'm gonna compare my impressions of it against a US based brisket. I'm gonna trim this uh, 14 pound brisket to cook it with just a rub. We're not gonna do an injection because my purpose is to see how the flavor texture of the beef uh, from Canada tastes like. I'm gonna use my dog strong knife to, to start cutting. But before that, I'm gonna sharpen it. I'm gonna use my uh, rapid steel sharpener. Just about uh, 10 strokes is enough to sharpen your knife. If you guys want to use the, this knife, a dog strong knife, together with the rapid steel, you can check out the Amazon store link in my video description below. First thing we wanna do is get the brisket out of the packaging. We, we don't want, ever want to wash our brisket. Cut open the cryovac. So the uh, US standard for brisket is prime choice and select. For the Canadian one is graded AA. So I need to check online to see what AA means. I'm hoping that it's about the same grade as a USA choice. All right, you never wash a brisket and uh, this is the purge. It has a lot of pathogens. We just toss the whole bag in the trash, double dry the brisket. This Canadian brisket looks just like a USA brisket. I was able to check on the grading. It looks like the AA Canadian grading would be equivalent to the US select grade. So that's not exactly the highest grade, but uh, this was the only Canadian brisket I could find in Restaurant Depot. And let's go ahead and do a tr tr light trim on it and see how it uh, kind of cooks out. Just gonna light trim putting my hand underneath, trimming all the excess fascia, silver skin from the brisket. Just gonna do a light trim, cook it with my Slappy Daddy rub and see how it tastes like. See, it's equivalent to the USA flavor for a select brisket. We'll see how it comes out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cook it kind of a little low and slow because uh, once you get into a select area, uh, I find that uh, it tastes better when you cook it really low and slow. So I'm gonna cook this without any injection with my barbecue rub. Trim off some of the uh, excess fat here. Get some of the fat out of the eye. Flip it over. I like to get some of the uh, fat off the uh, point here. So get some burn-ins. Looks pretty good. And uh, there's a little bit of oxidation here caused by the hot wash on the carcass. I'm going to trim this part off. Like so. Alright, here should do it. Put a rub on, I'm going to get a little bit of a beef concentrate, kind of create a tacky surface. Help the rub stick better. You can use mustard, which is here, doesn't really matter. I'm just going to use a little bit of beef concentrate on this side also. Nice, heavy coat of rub. A little bit of the fat cap if you like. It's optional. Always shake the rub before you apply, that way it loosens it up. 
shake it and apply. I have a large uh, one centimeter holes in my rub bottle. So it's the OCD attention to such detail that uh, allows you to win first place USA. You risk it. Point. Okay, all set. All right, starting up the smoke fire. So we're putting the pans underneath uh, so they catch us the grease. I have two pans underneath, like so. Helps catch the grease. Our Weber smoke fire is at 250. We're getting ready to put it in now. I have my two chunks of wood here. I'm gonna prop it up. It's been about 11 hours on uh, this brisket, Canadian brisket. And uh, remember I told you guys how you always cook not using time, nor internal temperature. You cook it until the crust sets. So it's taken about 11 hours at a low temperature. I lowered the temperature from about 250 to 235. You're probably wondering why 235 because uh, once you cook enough briskets, you develop what I call brisket whisperer skills and you can tell if your pit is too hot or too low so for my smoke fire today under today's ambient temperature conditions it felt like 235 was about right and you can see how beautiful the crust is it's taken about 11 and a half hours this is the scratch test and uh, you want to make sure that the crust is set before you proceed to the wrap phase uh, i have uh, the uh, wood underneath here to prop up the brisket so that it drains perfectly look at how beautiful the crust is absolutely gorgeous crust i'm going to take the wood out like so you see so you can see it that and uh, you can use this black belt tip uh, that I taught you on your brisket to create a beautiful crust. There's a little cavity at the bottom, so don't worry about the cavity. I'm going to show you how the cavity looks like, right? Because when you slice the brisket, it'll all be fine. So you don't have to worry about this cavity because the fat cap is down here, which you're not going to eat anyway. Uh, as I've told you guys many times, you want to put it in a piece of foil. Uh, I like to make a little black belt trick here, a little boat, so that the uh, liquid will not fall off the foil so and I'm going to rehydrate using one can of beef broth uh, and you can see what happens when I put the liquid on you can see what happens here it soaks in right so you can see carefully here watch carefully what happens okay see soak in so rehydrating a brisket is a vitally important part of the black belt trick of cooking a world-class brisket. Uh, one first place USA, KCBS Ranchers Reserve, showing you the technique I use. So if you apply your mop now and your rub falls off, what have you done? You have ruined your brisket because the crust is where the flavor is. The Yamela reaction, which is the reaction here uh, after a French chemist named Louis Camille Mallard, uh, he discovered this reaction back in the early 1900s. And for those of you who are super nerdy, this is the non-enzymatic browning of amino acids, right? Or the pyrolysis of amino acids. A uh, little bit complicated, but just take my word for it. As I put it on, if the crust falls off, then you've got a problem. That means you did not set the crust. You did not cook the meat long enough. So never cook using temperature or time. And I've taught 3,000 plus students in 250 classes around the world this, and they are all successful grand champions, whether they're in the backyard or in a competition setting. So you notice as I'm putting the liquid on, none of the crust or the rub falls off because it's fully fused to the protein. You need to be able to get your brisket to this stage to get a world-class brisket. This is a tip that uh, all Texas pitmasters who cook world-class briskets know, but you may not know this as a backyarder, but I'm just showing you how you get world-class results from a very modest brisket here. Uh, this is my Canadian brisket and uh, it's equivalent to a select grade. So we'll see how we can tease the maximum flavor potential out of this beautiful brisket here. And it's gonna be my first time cooking and eating a brisket from up north in Canada. Okay, one can, gone. 
Or you can put it back in the oven now, or you can put it back in the pit. It doesn't really matter. BTU is BTU. Since I'm cooking another brisket here in the uh, pit, I'm going to put my uh, wrap brisket back in the pit to go for another couple more hours. At the 13 hour mark, looks like uh, we have no oil here and a little bit of ash and that's it. So it looks like the uh, pan underneath the uh, cloth is catching most of the liquid. Let's go ahead and probe the uh, Canadian brisket for tenderness with a bamboo skewer. It's a little bit tough. Check the temperature for you. For those of you who need to know temperature, even though I've told you guys to cook without using a temperature probe, let's see what it is. So it's 196 degrees. It's not yet tender with the bamboo skewer. So I'm going to show you a little test here. We're going to do a test using the uh, thermometer and also using bamboo skewer. And I'm going to prove to you that a bamboo skewer is a more accurate and consistent way for you to reach brisket tenderness perfection. We've been cooking our brisket for about 14 and a half hours. And I always told you guys, the brisket is ready when it's ready. So never hurry. We're going to check it now. You notice that I did a probe into one hole using a bamboo skewer. You don't really need to make multiple holes on your brisket. So in competition, right, what I do is I can get five pokes from one hole. The first poke goes straight down. And then the second poke will be going a kind of a, a, a north and then the south, east and west. So I can get actually five probe tests from one hole in my foil. So I don't make any uh, too many holes in my foil. So this is still a little bit hard. I'm going to poke the north direction. I'm going to poke the west direction. That's pretty tender. And I'm gonna poke now the east direction going this way. And it's kind of tender, but not quite there yet. And for those of you who need to know the temperature, we're going to run it also using a thermal pen. Treat the difference here. So I'm poking straight down. Straight down is showing 207, 208 ish, right? Not very tender yet. And uh, I'm gonna go the other direction now. Showing 206, right? And it does not feel yet tender. So uh, I've proven my point that if you just use your thermometer as a gauge for tenderness, it is not consistent. So a much better method is to use a, uh, a uh, bamboo skewer. That way you are not tempted to look at the temperature. You can cook it until it feels probe tender. It still feels a little hard. So I'm not gonna pull it yet. I'm gonna let it cook some more and let the temperature go even higher. So I know some of you are already frowning and say, Harry, it's already overcooked. No, it's not because the collagen has not been rendered. The uh, collagen has not been converted to gelatin yet. And this is the proof that I'm showing you right now. When you cook a brisket, cook to the best feel you can, like peanut butter, poking the little uh, bamboo skewer into peanut butter. That's the best way to get a perfect result on the tenderness for your briskets at home. We had a 15 hour mark and let's check our brisket here. Yep, nice and tender. Okay. For those of you who want to see the temperature, I know you are kind of shaking in your seat now because you want to know the temperature. I checked it with the bamboo skewer, it's fine. Let's check it with the probe here. So today is 210 degrees. Probe a second time here. 209, probably here. 211, probably here. 210. So it's 210 today for this Canadian brisket to be tender. So follow my advice and rely on your bamboo skewer. Don't use your thermometer because if you try to use an arbitrary temperature like 203, 205, 190, it's not going to work. So use a bamboo skewer, you'll get better results that way. After about 15 hours, the uh, Canadian brisket is done. Super excited to give it a try. I let it cool down a little bit so I don't burn myself. Looks absolutely gorgeous. Slice it up. I like to cut away the point muscle first. Like so just slide your knife right near, underneath the flat and point muscle. Slide off and glide just like off like that. Looking beautiful. I'm gonna cut some up. Uh, point muscles here and cut some burn ends. A lot of you ask me what knives I use. This is a Dell Strong Slicer Shogun series. So the nice folks at Dell Strong sent me some knives to use after they saw me mangling my meat by using blunt knives. So 
This one is super duper sharp. Has a nice balance to it also. And uh, let's see here, cut it into cubes, I always do. The burn muscles or burn ends. When you go to Texas and you order barbecue, you might get asked the question, you like the fatty or the lean? So this is the fatty portion here. And it uh, looks absolutely beautiful. So, okay. cut some slices off the flat. Okay, looks pretty good. See the uh, flat muscle. It's a nice drape. That, see that? It's accordion pull. Pull it, perfectly tender, absolutely perfect. So you see what I mean when you use your bamboo skewer? When you poke your brisket, it feels like you're going through cold peanut butter. That is the perfect tenderness. Today it was 209, so uh, if you want to get a consistent brisket, always go ahead and use a bamboo skewer, don't use a thermometer. So see the accordion pull here, pull it. Just perfectly, superbly, perfectly tender, beautiful brisket flats. All right, let's give it a taste test now. Let's try the flat. I'm gonna eat a slice from the left and a slice from the right, tell you which one I like better. Beautiful smoke ring. So, for a sort of a lower select grade, Canadian style, AA grade, uh, really good beefy flavor. I ate one on the left, let me eat the one on the right slice. See which one I like better. The flat slices or the lean slices from the right hand side tasted just a little bit better on this side. So if this was a contest or I'm going to be impressing my mother-in-law or father-in-law, I will be slicing it from this side in, right? So this side of the brisket just tastes a little bit better. You'll see these kinds of uh, variations in the flavor and the taste in most briskets. So I always encourage you to, when you practice at home, take one slice on the left, one slice on the right, eat both slices of the flat muscle or the lean muscle. You may decide which one you like better to serve your most esteemed guest. Let me jump now to the uh, point muscle. The point is the way the burn ends are. I'm gonna pick a nice tender burn end here. This one looks pretty good. Look at that. Beautiful bark. Smoke ring on it. Just a tad, tad dry and chewy, but, but just good beef flavor. Uh, I'm gonna try it now. Always with the dip. I tried it without the dip initially. Let me try it with the jus dip. There's a lot of jus liquid here that's very flavorful. You want to always, when you serve brisket, dip the brisket in the jus. Taste it first. If it's salty enough, don't dip the jus. But if it needs a little bit of boost in flavor, go ahead and dip in the jus. Give it another taste. Tastes a lot better with the jus on the flat. For the point, let me try it. See if it's better with the point with the jus or not. This is an important lesson here. For the flat, it tastes better when I dip it into the jus. However, for the point, once you dip into the jus, it's a little too salty. All right, so this is our black belt tips I wanna show you as a barbecue competitor, first place winner. This is the kind of thought process we go through in competition. These are techniques I'm showing you on my channel now. Are also helpful if you are a backyarder because you can cook a backyard brisket for your friends and family and blow the socks out of them, but if you want to take it up just a little bit of a notch, this little tip I showed you, whether dip or no dip, cut from the left, cut from the right, these are tips that you can take home with you even though you are serving your friends and family. Enough of me talking now. Mr. Beans is wagging his tail. Beans, you want some food? Okay, so let me pack some food for him. Give him a little bit of a Canadian brisket to try and let him and see what his conclusions are. My conclusions overall, the Canadian brisket is, is really just as good as an American brisket. Uh, hard to tell any difference between the two. Of course, I have to compare sort of a select grade USDA versus a Canadian AA, which is kind of equivalent uh, in terms of the grading for the beef. So for a kind of a lower grade brisket, uh, it's pretty good eating. Uh, it's perfectly cooked, got a little bit of a smoke. Now, even though it's been in the pit for almost 15, 16 hours, 15 hours, you can see that this bark is absolutely gorgeous and beautiful and you can see how beautiful the smoke ring is. This is all just good technique, good food science and good methodology on how to cook a perfect brisket 
in your pit and it doesn't really matter. Today I used a, a pellet cooker. You can do the same thing in your kettle, Kamado, Traeger, uh, your, your drum, your offset. It, it doesn't really matter because I taught you guys that it's always about the pit master and never the pit. If you give me a shovel, hole in the ground, I'll cook a good brisket for you. So that's what it takes and uh, let's see if Mr. Beans enjoys it also. All right, we have a little couple of pieces here, Mr. Beans. He's ready for his uh, test. Okay, Beans, I have some Canadian brisket for you here. So you want to try some brisket from Manitoba? So he grabbed the point muscle, give it a plate a lick, grab the uh, flat muscle. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> okay, I think he likes it. Thanks for watching my Canadian brisket episode. Please like, subscribe, and share. I'd like to do a shout out to all my Patreons for helping support me on my channel to cover my production costs. Until the next video, we will see ya.